Sup guys, Silas here, and today I'll be playing two games of the same nature. Namely Carmageddon 2, Apocalypse Now, and Hotline Miami. Both of these games are on sale today on uh, GOG.com as part of their 2013 DRM free winter sale. So if you like what you see, you can get both of these games for very little money over there. So that's www.gog.com. Now let's start with Carmageddon 2. Uh, this game got released in 1998 and is a sequel to the original Carmageddon game, created by Stainless Games. Both of these games received a lot of criticism in their time due to being graphically violent. The game is mainly a racing game, but with a few additions which were quite controversial at the time. As you can see, the, main, uh, the game is mainly a racing game, but there are a few additions that made it quite controversial at the time, which were you can run over every single pedestrian and animal that you come across during the game, like you see here. The other thing you can do is make sure that your, all your opponents crash and their cars burn down, which also was quite controversial because people were afraid during those days that uh, anything that would happen into a game would also happen in real life, that people would get influenced by games. Nowadays we know this is rubbish, but, you know, these were older times. I, I remind you, 1998 is when this game got released. Well, as for Carmageddon 1, because this is the sequel to Carmageddon 1, uh, there are three different ways in which you can finish every single level of the game. First one is very obvious, you complete the race passing every checkpoint before your time runs out. Simple enough. The second one is to destroy all your opponent's cars. I think you start with about eight opponents, so you want to kill every single opponent's car. You want to destroy them, you want to just make sure they, they can't finish their race. Uh, and the last one is to kill every single pedestrian in every game and animal, which, as you can imagine, did bring up quite some controversy. Um, all in all, it's quite a fun game. The, I have to say the controls are a bit hard to get used to at the start, but when you do get used to them, you'll, you'll notice yourself getting a lot better at the game quite quickly. Other than that, uh, the game features a soundtrack by Iron Maiden. Uh, quite a few uh, Iron Maiden soundtracks. Actually, the main you know, style of the music is heavy metal, which fits perfectly with this style of game. It is quite old, so I would only really recommend buying this game if you don't mind that the graphics are quite outdated. But if you don't mind that kind of game, you've got a great game to pick up, because it is a lot of fun. I've played a good few hours of this, and it's, it's good. It's definitely very good. The game features a total of 10 levels, and each level is also followed by a mission, which you must complete before you unlock the next level. Which actually takes quite some time, because the races are pretty difficult to finish. It's not by any means an easy game, which there is not enough of these days. I mean, if you look at all the new games, you've got so many difficulty settings. You've got easy, you've got medium, you've got hard, you've got extra hard. Extra hard these days are, in my opinion, about the same as normal was back in the days. So keep that in mind, this game is not easy by any means of the word. I think this game has had a big impact on later games of this genre like GTA, like Saints Row, um, and all those kind of games. Because there's a lot of gore in those games, and this was the first game to really get into that kind of style of game where you can kill uh, other AI-controlled characters, and actually see them explode on the spot, and actually see them die in quite cruel ways, often. And this really set the pace for games like GTA, where it's not only a racing game anymore, but you also control a main character that can fight and shoot people as well and like kill him in really frankly disgusting ways sometimes. So I think it's a very good tone setter for layer genres. Another thing that this particular game was one of the first in was the fact that cars were destroyable, including your own car. Your car could get destroyed in multiple parts, like you could lose your wheels, you could your car could actually be split in half, your engine could be worse. As you can see right now on the screen, where there's actually smoke coming from the engine, meaning your car can't go any faster. This was new in a racing game. This was not something that happened a lot in these, ca these games during this time. So keep that in mind. Every time you see a car in a game now that is just slowly getting worse and worse and just looking worse, this was one of the first games that did this. And that's something, that's something to keep in mind. 
Because if this game hadn't tried it, you know, who knows if we would have had destroyable cars now. We probably would have, you know, <laughs> let's be honest. But it's nice to see, you know, nice to know where it comes from. It's a little bit of gaming history for you there, you know? Always nice. In a few countries, like Germany and the UK, the first release of this game got censored, meaning that the pedestrians and the animals got turned into aliens and zombies. This due to the, you know, the graphic violence of the game and people actually getting shocked by what you could do, because this was very new at the time. So the pedestrians got turned into either zombies or aliens which had green blood, or rather green slime coming out of them when you killed them, which made the game a lot more acceptable in those countries. Luckily, later on, this got revoked and uh, a blood splatter pack came out which turned all the pedestrians back just into normal humans with normal blood. And you can argue this as both a good or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. I don't think you should really censor this kind of stuff because, in all honesty, who really gets, you know, who really gets influenced by this kind of thing? Not many people do. So all in all, I think Carmageddon 2 is a very, if not good, decent game. It is old, so it's not going to compare really well to many of the new games you've got right now with far better graphics and far a far better engine. But if you're short of money and if you really do like old, you know, classical games, or if you've played this in the past as a kid and you want to have a nostalgic feeling, you know, do consider picking it up. It is definitely, definitely fun. That is all I can say about it for, you know, that I'm sure about. It is fun. I've played a good few hours of it. Uh, I didn't get very far because honestly I'm not a racing game player. But this is one of the few racing games that I've actually played for a few hours, which says something. It might be because I have played it as a kid. This is one of the, the games that I played as a kid and I remember all the controversies that was around it. But luckily my parents at the time did not really care for that kind of stuff. So I didn't get censored at all and I had a good, a good time playing it and it was good to play this game again. So thanks GOG for giving me this opportunity because honestly, I had a good time. I really did. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> So, on to the next game, which will be Hotline Miami. Here we go. Now the second game I'm going to be playing is Hotline Miami. This is a 2D top-down action video game made by Denetton Games and was released in 2012, around October, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's a very action-heavy game. It's a, like I said, it's a 2D platformer. You look from above and at the start of the game you get explained quite well how every control works. So that is a very good bonus. You know exactly what you what you need to do before the game actually really starts. Um, it is quite gory. It is all about killing enemy targets. It's all about using weapons to your advantage. It's also about it's all about stealth. I think this is a very very good game. Let, let's start with that. There's a few aspects of the game that really gripped me as soon as I even stepped into the game. Uh, there's this mechanic with doors. Like, you can use doors to your advantage to hide behind. You can use them to knock enemies over so you can get a killing blow on them. You can use them to um, completely lock yourself in somewhere. Um, then you get all the kinds of different weapons. You've got baseball bats that you can use to instantly knock someone down. You can use tire irons, which you can use for the same thing. You can just use them to knock someone on the head and instantly kill them. And those are used as stealth weapons. Weapons that don't attract attention from other guards or other enemies that you need to kill. Then you've got guns, which are a lot more noisy but also a lot more effective. Uh, as you'll probably see later into this video. They they do a lot more damage and they, you can use them from behind. But the problem with them is they're a lot more noisy as well. So they attract the attention of other guards that are around the vicinity as well. So that's something you need to think of before you step into a level. The fact that... Whatever weapon you choose, you need to choose different weapons for different situations. So that is that's something. Uh, the game is quite new, as I said, it got released in 2012, but it's got a really old game vibe, if you th if you know what I mean. The, the graphics aren't astounding, yet they're not very ugly either. Um, they're just a bit old-fashioned. It's 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 all pixelated quite well, but. The music is what really makes it for me. Like, you've really got this feeling like you're in an old game when you listen to the music in this game. Now, you can compare this game a lot to Carmageddon, and 
other games, like after that I've already mentioned, like GTA and and uh, Saints Row, in the fact that it's all about this one guy that needs to kill all these other guys, and it doesn't matter who you kill, you need to, you just need to kill people, and it's all about like some sort of mobster thing, and you're also you're in a gang and you need to kill people for other people, so that's cool. Now every time you start a game, you get called by someone. Every level you get a phone call from one of your bosses or from one of your associates that ask you to do something for them. And every time it's something different. And these levels are very, very challenging. What you see in this cut is not something I did in one go. It took me several tries per level to actually get stuff done. And that might be because I'm not very good at video games, but I think it is also partly to do with that the game is very tough. There are just certain elements, certain guards just respond far quicker than you would expect them to, for example. Uh, like you'll see in, a, in, in the first level I think that we're going to right now. So you start every level off by stepping into a car. Uh, this car takes you to your destination, and at the destination you get told exactly what you need to do. Uh, the entire layout of the floor will get shown to you, and all the guards you need to take down. And I think that's nice. I think that's very nice for a game to just tell you, do this, do this. Even though it's not as simple as it looks, it is still very nice. Because it gives you an idea of what you need to do. It gives you this feeling like, okay, I know, I know what I need to do. Let's get to it. So you play as Richard in the very first level. And here you go. This is, I think, take three or four. Uh, you have to take down two guards. This guard is the one I had a lot of trouble with. Because this guy uh, instantly reacts to you as soon as you step into the thing, as you can see. And there we go, I knocked him down. It's very tough, but you get used to it after. You get the hang of it after like two or three goes. And it tells you every time you've killed all the guards, just so you know, like, okay, I'm done. As you can see through the speed that I did on this level, this is not something I could have possibly done in one go. I know exactly how to do this because I had to do the level like 20 times. It was extremely tough. I had no clue how to do it until I realized I could take two guards down with the same punch. So that was, you know, that was revolutionary for me because otherwise I would have been stuck there for so long. I think the main thing this game has got going for itself is the difficulty. You really get into every level with the mindset, okay, this is what I need to do, I'm going to do it. And you figure out quite fast that you can't actually do it that simply. So, you get into a level, you go into the mob, the first mob can already kill you quite easily. And you're like, okay, need to get past this. Okay, got him, now what? Okay, second guard, oh shit, he killed me as well. And that really gives the game, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. You really get addicted to the difficulty of the level, how weird that might sound, because you just want to finish it, you want to make sure that you can do the level, you don't want to look like a scrub, you want to make sure, okay, I did it. And when you do it, when you actually finish the level, you feel quite proud of yourself, because it is such a tough, a tough thing to do. And I think that's a brilliant thing that a game should have. If you like difficult games, I would definitely suggest picking this up, because Oh my god, this is fantastic. I really enjoy this. I wouldn't say it's my favourite game of all time, but it's definitely something that I have played a few hours of now, which I did not expect I would do. But I have played a few hours of it, and it's very, very good. It is honestly astounding me, because I am one of those people, I, I'm ashamed to admit, that finds it difficult to go back to games with, with outdated graphics. And this game does have outdated graphics. Yet, I still loved it, which I honestly did not expect. So, if you are, especially if you're one of those people that is able to go back to games with outdated graphics, and if you are, I salute you, I really do, then please consider this game, because it is fantastic. And Carmageddon as well. Carmageddon is good if you get used to the graphics, uh, no, not to the graphics, the controls. If you get used to the controls, Carmageddon 2 is definitely a worthy pickup as well. So keep that in mind. Keep all keep both these games in mind whenever you plan on buying something. They're both on sale on GOG, which you know I, I might sound a bit sellouty here, but honestly I would not do this 
if I did not believe in GOG.com, I think it's fantastic what they do. They, they port old games that you can't possibly get anymore and you can buy them. You own them. That's what DRM3 means. You own them. It's not like Steam where Steam actually owns your games. You just have an account with those games on them. You own the games and you get to keep them. You get to keep them forever. And they're cheap as hell. Honestly, especially during these sales. So, you know, please consider picking them up. It is very good. So we're now going to the second level, if I log to this, um, which already got a lot more in-depth. There were a lot more things you need to do, because in the first level, as you could see, there were no guns involved. Now we've got a gun. Quite fast. Like, quite quickly into the level, you get a gun. And it shows you the effect of the gun compared to the baseball bat, because it is a lot more noisy, and it attracts a lot more attention, as you will see in a second. That's, uh, that was a classic uh, example of how you can use a door to your advantage. You can use that door to knock your enemy over when it's standing behind him and just to win, you just to just, you know, just to kill him when he's knocked down. Now here you see the effect of the gun. Kill them both, but it alerts the other guard. So you need to be quick on your feet to kill the guard that's running towards you as well, otherwise he will kill you. Because the AI is pretty clever in that. It is, cr you know, it aims pretty well and it aims pretty fast. So you you gotta be quick. You, you do have to be quick. Now this is, I think, the last guy. We kill him, and the chapter is cleared. And this level, I think, took me about maybe ten tries, which sounds like a lot, but, but it really isn't. Like it takes you five minutes. So that was it, then, guys. I hope you uh, you learned something from this game. Hope you got some good tips on whether to get these games or not. Hope you did. I hope I did my job correctly here. Um, if you do want to buy them, the link is in, below, in the comments below to the website where you can buy them. That's QG.com. And, you know, have fun with them if you do. Because they will be cheap. You will have fun. I can guarantee that. Especially with Hotline Miami. If I had to choose between the two, Hotline Miami would be my favourite. Because I have never had so much fun in a 2D platformer. It was, it was fantastic. And I'm actually considering finishing the game within the next few days. So... Until next time, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.